do it, Ron. Ron Richardson, Richardson, and then Peggy Guy. <laughs> Good evening. I'm a nuke. I've been a nuke since 1981 when I went to nuclear power school in Orlando, Florida. I learned most of what I, look, what I know about nuclear energy serving on two nuclear submarines out of Charleston, South Carolina. I currently live in Virginia and drove down today taking a day of vacation so I could come and talk to you a little bit about nuclear energy. One of the things that I learned when I was very young was that my father brought home this little pellet. Actually, it wasn't this pellet because I actually lost the pellet he brought me home. But this pellet represents the size of a fuel pellet. It's simulated. Of course, I can't bring you any into this building, but it is a nine gram pellet. It has the same energy value in our current basically second generation technology is a ton of coal. That's a pickup truck load of coal, a big pickup truck load of coal. The, su the submarines they used to serve on operated for 14 years on a single load of fuel. The current submarines that we built today operate for 33 years on a single load of fuel. The power they produce is clean enough to run inside a submarine, sealed up, full of people making fresh air, fresh water, all the air conditioning, all the power that we need. That power is the same kind of power that we are going to be using here at the William States Lee nuclear facility. That facility will be 2,200 megawatts. If it was being powered by coal, it would require a 200-car train load of coal every single day. Instead, it's going to need about six, eight, uh, semi-tractor trailer loads of fuel every 18 months. The environmental impact of that plant will be significantly lower than any other alternative. We had a solar salesman up here talking about how solar power is so great. What is the solar power of his 3,200 megawatt facility between the hours of 6 p.m. and 6 a.m.? Zero. Absolutely zero. During the time... No, folks, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a retired sailor. Okay? I spent 33 years in the Navy. So my, my language sometimes goes off. But the reality is the sun does not stay up all the time. Believe it or not. Now also, the wind doesn't blow all the time. People call renewables renewable. What I call them is unreliable. We need power when we need power. There's no way to store it. We've been studying that stuff for... A hundred years. Thomas Edison invented batteries over a hundred years ago. We still haven't got anything better because chemistry is chemistry. It doesn't change. Physics is physics. We know how to produce electricity reliably, safely. We've been doing it for over 50 years here in the U.S. Not one single person has ever been killed by a nuclear power plant in the U.S., commercial nuclear power plant in the U.S., and nobody was killed by radiation at Fukushima. Nobody. Yes, I'm up here shaking and passionate because I've got a two-year-old granddaughter who will still be alive when this country completely runs out of natural gas if we keep burning it at the same rate we're burning it today. And if we decide we're going to use natural gas to replace coal, to replace nuclear, and to, to power semi-tractor trailers across the country like T. Wood Pickens wants to do, we'll run out of natural gas a lot quicker than that. We don't have the ability to produce wind power reliably because the wind doesn't blow. Humans can't control it. Yes, humans do make mistakes, but humans can operate power plants safely and reliably because we do it. We do it carefully. We have a lot of backups. We have backups to the backup. We have people that follow procedures. We have carefully trained people. And yes, we do have big brains, darn it. We've been studying energy for a long time. We've known the sun has energy for thousands of years. We've known the wind has energy for thousands of years. We've only known about nuclear for the last 62 years. And we've done pretty well at making it a reliable power source in competition with the coal and oil and gas. Competition with those. It replaces them. It pushes them out of the marketplace which is one of the reasons why Wall Street doesn't like nuclear, because Wall Street likes coal, oil, and gas. Or Mr. Adams, we're going to have to have you
Thank you. Okay, thank you.